You may have degrees. You may have experience. You may have, watch this, you may have all types of uh, uh, accomplishments. But if you can't see the greatness in somebody else, your greatness is dim. Read what I have. Small-minded people cannot see the greatness in others, only in themselves. They can only see it in themselves. Read it. Sister Lucky took Lady Valerie and I out to dinner last week, showing us honor, but she allowed me to leave the tip to honor the server. Now, I didn't have to pay for that dinner. Yeah. But before she could know it, I'd already flipped the server or something. Because somebody honored me, I want to honor the ones that serve it. Right. And I want y'all to learn this, because it's this next sentence. I may not say it like I really want to say it, but I want you to read it, then I'll explain it. Read it. Then I looked around the room to see if I recognized anyone great or Whenever worthy. Whenever you go to a restaurant or somewhere public, always look around to see if you see somebody of greatness. Amen. See somebody of honor. Amen. See somebody that's worthy of honor, that you can honor. You may can't honor them with paying their tab, and that, but you probably, you can do something. You can acknowledge them. You can give them a little gesture. Uh, encouragement, a little note, write a little note. Sometimes you can send a note over to a table. You can't pay their tab, but maybe you can send a note over to say, I appreciate what you've done. I saw you in the paper where you accomplished it. You put yourself on the line. You sacrificed. God, help me with that. I used to see Pastor London and Sister Mary and that dad would be in the newspaper all the time fighting for the black club, fighting for his district, fighting for his precinct, fighting for the city when he was the mayor. Whenever I had an opportunity, he'd allow me. I'd take him to dinner. When he had an opportunity, he'd take me to dinner. I can tell you the number of times he'd taken me to dinner to, to Bryce's. I wish Bryce's would come back. I wish Luby's would come back. A lot of folks don't even know Luby's used to be here. <laughs> and we'd go to places. Only time he let me down, that his daughter got on him, Mary got on him big time. He invited me to court. Three hours went by. I ate by myself. But he came over to my house. Guess what Pastor Lundell did? He got down on one day. He said, oh, he said, oh, forgive me. He said, I'm not going to even make an excuse. <laughs> you understand that? Because he knew he had done something that had let me down. I said, but I, said, I had a good time. I said, they were, they were really catering to me in, in Colton. I said, I'm almost the only person in there. I, said, I had people bringing me stuff and stuff. And I said, what does that taste like? Come on, bring your stuff. I had samples. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, I'm not even making an excuse. I'm going to own up to it. He said, you give me one more chance. I said, okay. Read this thing. Read this thing. Then I looked around the room to see if I recognized anyone great or worthy so I could pay their tab. Come on. Maybe you are not able to pick up tabs in a restaurant, but you can vocally express your appreciation and encourage them to keep up the good work. Read. You should never enter the presence of true greatness without acknowledging it. Come on. Those who are small-minded resent greatness, feel intimidated by it. intimidated by greatness. Wow. But just, just to be in the presence... You that do not know Bishop Mason, who started the Churches of God in Christ, he showed up in Texas Canada years ago when I was a boy. And he walked into a little church over here off of Seabrook Street, off, just off of College Hill. And he knew that pastor at that time. He walked in and all of the saints recognized him. And they all stood up. They actually stopped what they were doing just to recognize him. Watch this. Right after that, my grandmother invited him to her house down on the dump, <laughs> down on Crescent Street, and had dinner at our house. Amen. So many of by myself. Greatness sat in that house one day. God hit me with this. Powerful man of God. When God poured out his spirit on the Zuzu Street back in 1907, the first time recorded in that in that intensity, white pastors, they formed a church or organization called the Assemblies of God. And the Assemblies of God put themselves under Bishop Mason. The whites and black were having services in Memphis all together because the Holy Ghost was involved. And as the Assemblies of God began to grow, then they moved their headquarters to Hot Springs and the Church of God Christ stayed in Memphis. I'm still in there by myself. 
Even today, Bishop Blake, who's the bishop in Los Angeles right now, the presiding bishop, they used to live on Preston Street for a season. Well, right down on the dump. Well, See, I'm in here by myself. But some people didn't recognize that greatness. Now, now they want to show some um, after you arrive. But it's the people that when you didn't have two missiles around you, it's the people that saw something in you when you didn't see it in yourself. But if you can only try and understand greatness. But you gotta understand it. Try to understand it. Read it. And how they went through many things. That, wait a minute, that didn't just happen. Greatness takes sacrifice. Greatness takes time out of your life, energy out of your life, resources out of your life. Read it. To get there. Maybe you could appreciate their sacrifices. Come on. So whenever you recognize this interest in you or in what you are trying to accomplish, it is time to exit. Somebody say exit. Exit. <laughs> you see that you you see the disinterest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you you just working yourself. You do it and you do it. Yes, they are concerned. Yes, sir. That's disinterest. Yes, They're not interested in you. Yes, what were you gonna it is time to exit that environment, relationship, or both. Come on. Jesus declared, when you enter into a city. Now, here's the instruction from the Lord himself. You're going to have to learn to do what he's instructed us. If you enter into a city, uh, let, let's loan someone's home. Because he gives instructions for entering someone's home also. Because he said, when you're in a home and you sit down at that table, he said, you eat what they present to you. Amen. Don't you be getting all tea and stuff because they got some of you, you know. I'm just telling you what he said. Well, Pastor, I just don't like broccoli. I just don't like this. I just don't. No, no. You get a little portion of it and do not insult your, get, your host. Amen. You, you, if you're not allergic to it, you can taste it. Because he said, whatever they put before you, receive it. He said, then with thanksgiving, bless it. When you bless that food, God, help me with this. That food then, whatever that was, even if it was a meager meal, I never will forget when we were, I was working at a church, <laughs> laboring at a church, I was working in a graveyard shift at the uh, ammunition plant, a Lone Star, back in 69, somewhere along the day. And I got off that morning from graveyard, and I went out to the church, because we were going to dig a trench around the church. So they could pour the concrete footing because they were going to brick the church. And we, we didn't have a back hole. We didn't have a, one of those track holes that you stick it in there and just draw back all this earth. We out there with these little sharpshooters. A sharpshooter is a little narrow shell. And we out there, we one shell at a time, all the way around. Can you imagine going around a building? It was only about a half a dozen of them. When about one o'clock, two o'clock come, we was way past lunchtime. Right. One of the old sisters, she said, well, I'm going to feed everybody that day. She was a widow lady. She didn't have much. And when we got there, she had a pot of grain. She had a pot of beans. She had some fresh onion. She had cornbread. See, back then they had homemade butter. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. The kind you put in the churn and you churn it. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You work for that butter. And I'm looking. And I'm looking. I didn't see no fried chicken. I didn't see no neck bones. And the only meat that I saw was a ham hock in the grave. And I was getting ready to go for it. So I spent too much time looking around that table. And my pastor had already reached in there. And got that next I mean that hot that hammer. <laughs> Lord, hell in the day. But when you hungry, those greens was good. Those beans and cornbread was good. That fresh onion, I mean, every time I took a fork load of something, I took a bite of onion. I fork load of bite of onion. Well, listen, I made that work. Because I was taught whatever they set before you. He said, you eat that. 
that I ate it with Gladys. I went upset with her. But if I'd have known she had had chicken, I'd have jumped in the car and went up the plate and got some chicken. See? But read this thing. Just Jesus declared, when you enter into a city, you are not received with honor. When you leave it, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against you. Shaking the dust off means all of that honor that you brought into that place. Whether it's into a city or to a home. What he was telling you was, when he said shake the dust off, bring all of that honor that you brought with you, bring it back to you. Yes. See, Jesus said, my peace I give you, not like the world give it. But the same peace that he gave, he could have taken it back. Because he told us, he said, when you get ready to leave that place, he said, don't let your peace reside in that place. See, I'm in there by myself. Your, your peace, your anointing, that thing, that special thing that God has in you, you can bring it right back to you. Because he said, don't take your pearl, he said, and cast it before a swine. He said, because that swine, that hog was taken, he'll stomp all over it, push, push it down in the mud. He don't appreciate your pearl. A hog don't appreciate your pearl. He said, take it back. Take all that on the back. Take all that peace back. Take everything that you were trying to give them, because they're not... They're not interested. <laughs> read this thing. Read this thing. Because honor is when our differences are celebrated. If and you rewarded. do not celebrate another person's difference, you're not showing them honor. That's the only way you can show honor. It's by celebrating their difference. Whoever honor is due unto, he said you're supposed to show them honor. He said double honor. He said you show up double if they're worthy. Oh, help the Holy Ghost. Read this thing. People must recognize your presence is a gift. Your women, your presence, your being there. That's a gift. Your presence, just being there, is a presence. <laughs> Brother Hoffman and I were talking two weeks ago in my office. Now, this is before his sister passed. And we were talking about, because he, he and Sister Donna had shown up uh, at my, uh, my uncle's funeral. And they were there. And he said, you know, sometimes, Pastor, it's like, you really don't have words to console people? He said, but just sometimes see in their face. Your presence, your being there is a present. <laughs> don't y'all make me get happy here. Just seeing you there. Just being there. You may not have nothing to give anybody, but your presence, that's a gift. Sitting out in the audience, some of you, just you being here, even considering coming here. Yes, That's a gift. Yes, Big John's Caldwell funeral, funeral, my subject, I dealt with how Big John ministered with his presence. Yes, when I drive up, I see his truck sitting in that same spot. Every Sunday, I get happy. Oh, when Brother Staggers, when I see that car sitting in his special parking spot, I know everything all right. But when I see his car and don't see him, or I see him and don't see Miss Mac, I'm in here by myself. Their presence ministers. God, read this thing. People must recognize your presence is a gift and an improvement to their life. Wait a minute. Your presence should improve people's lives. Does that make any sense? That's your presence. It's too messy. It's, too, it's just too much mess. No, no. Your presence is for to eradicate mess. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Why is it so much mess? If everybody's presence would bring some peace. If everybody's presence would bring some honor. If everybody's presence would bring some respect. I'm going to help y'all with a scripture that's misquoted in John 3.16. For God so loved the world. The world is the subject. It's not the whosoever believe. That ain't the subject. The subject is he loved he so loved the world. Watch this. It didn't have nothing to do with the whosoever believe. I'm gonna mess with you now. Because that's what the text, you know the text backwards and forth. For God so loved the world. That's what he loved. Now, what was the world? He didn't talk about the world system with the devil being the god of this world. He wasn't talking about that. That word world means his order. Right. Okay. That 
mean how God had it arranged. God so loved the way he had arranged and ordered things that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed it, because the whosoever are the people. And the people are the only ones in all of God's creation that get out of order. So I'm in there by myself. We the only one mess up God's arrangement. God has a way for things to be. The birds from the church, y'all know I feed birds. My birds are out there every morning doing what I want them to do. Because I feed them premium feed. They're beautiful. The bluebird was trying to make the nest in his little bluebird house. I bought him a house. And I see the bluebird going in and out, building his nest in the bluebird house. I want bluebirds in there. I want a sparrow in there. I want a bluebird. I want to see a pretty bird in that house. And then I have customized feet because I want to see colorful birds. And so they're doing their job every morning. Beautiful and singing and chirping. Bringing some peace over there in the hood where I live. But I'm still in the hood, sister. But my birds is bringing me some peace. I ain't worried about that when a couple of houses down when he played his music, my one was popping. That is too loud. You riding down the street and you making the, the, the glasses on my table vibrate. So I'm here to tell you, we the ones get out of order. So he so loved his declaration, the way he arranged things, and the way he had ordered things, that whosoever, because we the whosoever, we the one messing up his arrangements. We the only one get out of line. A bird can't sin. A dog can't sin. So I'm in here by myself. It's mankind that gets out of order. It's mankind that's doing things they weren't made to do. It's mankind. It's men, women, boys, and girls. They're the ones out of order. So he so loved the way he had ordered things. He said that whosoever believed in him would not perish because God said, I'm going to. He destroyed the whole world. He doesn't want us to perish. Don't forget that, that text. That text is about how he arranged things. And when we're not in God's order, don't care if you're a man or a woman. I don't care if you get him straight. It's only one plan of salvation. It's, it's one plan is for everybody. Because all God wants us to do is get back in line. Get back in order. We may, wait a minute. We may only make some excuses. Because we're not interested in what God said. But God said, I so love the way I've arranged things that I sent my own name. So I said, only. It, it's not too many things uh, more valuable than only. You know, your last is not as great as your own name. Because you already had. <laughs> you know, that last piece of watermelon, it was a little good watermelon. <laughs> yeah, but you'd already had the whole watermelon. But then, if that had been your only slice, <laughs> y'all better know that's why I get up 4 o'clock every morning. Every morning, I'm up. I'm up for the sun get up, for my birds get up, for the chicken over there, the chicken coop up, clucking, and the rooster got crowing. And if Valerie left that piece of sirloin or some kind of steak from the roadhouse two days ago, that's going to be my breakfast meat. I know it was in her little, you know, that carryout. It was in her carryout. I know that's her piece. But she didn't eat it that day. She didn't eat it the next day. First thing next morning, that's my little piece of steak to go with my grits, my egg, and my biscuit. And she'll tell you, she'll come in there and she'll say, did you eat my, did you eat my, my leftovers? She know I did. Because it's only her and myself in the house. I don't make no excuse. I said, you should have eaten it. <laughs> oh, I'm through. Come on. <laughs> if you were rejected in a place. What's this? Read. If you were rejected in a place. When you leave it, you must take back all the honor that was back. in you. Take it all back. Take it all back. You tried. You did your best. But Jesus said, he said it in the scripture. He said, when you shake that dust off your feet, read. And leave that place. And leave that place. Read. Learn how to respond appropriately to those who are disinterested. If somebody is not interested in you, you got to appreciate.
appropriately know how to respond. You don't get stupid with them because they're stupid. You don't go cuckoo because they cuckoo. They, they're not interested. They're just interested in you. Okay, now what you have to do, I have to recognize that. Now I'm going to respond appropriately. They may tell you bye. You tell them goodbye. Don't let them don't hit you with a good Lord. Y'all know the rest of Come on, I'm through. Come on, read. I got to go before I get in trouble. Come on, read. Learn how to respond appropriately. Learn. Learn. So wisdom can be learned. It can be taught. And if you don't get it, he said, if any man still lack it, let him ask God. Read this thing. Learn how to respond appropriately to those who are disinterested in what you are about. Come on. See if they care. See if they care. If you stop contacting them. See if they care. If you just cut off all time, see, see if they give some kind of in indication that they miss you. If they don't miss you, it, it should be easier for you not to miss them. <laughs> and they call you up two months later, I've been thinking about it. Who are you? Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> See if they care or have any desire to listen, Come or do they make excuses? Uh -huh. If they do, you are not to keep pouring out time. Oh, you are draining yourself. You wearing yourself out, running in behind somebody that don't want to be caught. <laughs> you running out to chase somebody, and they you can't ever get them because they are running you. That's why you can't catch up with them. They're not trying to get caught. Why are they trying to catch somebody that don't want to be caught? Jesus wouldn't have ate with him in his house. That's right. 
And those same Pharisees said, he eats with sinners. Jesus said, that's what I came for. And Zacchaeus, without Jesus preaching one service, just his presence, just sitting there, Zacchaeus came to Jesus and he said, Lord, I'll give back four times, four folds to anybody that I have taken from and I should I did it inappropriately. He said four times because he had the record. He was a tax collector. Tax collector. He went back and he looked and said, I'm giving four times the amount back. How many ready for God to reimburse you? How many of you are ready for divine reimbursements? Y'all better help me with this. I'm giving you something right now. You're gonna have to receive this while I'm saying it. You can't receive this tomorrow. You got to, if you can receive it, if you want God to give you divine reimbursements, that's some things that you have lost in. That's some things that have been sapped and drained out of you. God said, I can give you divine reimbursements. So I speak it right now in Jesus' name. Come on, I speak. Can you receive it? Are you interested in what I just said? Some are not interested. But this is They don't care. They're not concerned. I'm concerned. I'm concerned about you. I care about you. And I want God's best for you. God said, I want to bring you before great men. God want to elevate you to the great status. He said, I want to give you life and that more abundantly. He's always increasing. God is about increase. He's about addition. He's about multiplication. He added unto the church. Then he greatly multiplied the church. And daily he did it. So I'm here today. I want God to multiply you. I want him to bless you in a special way. There are some people right now. There's something you need from God. You're wanting from God. You want relationship. I want every eye closed. God wants a relationship with you. But he wants you to stop wasting time on the disinterested. You waste that's time you can be given to him. You can be given to God's people. There are resources that you're wasting trying to gain the approval of those that don't even care about you. You need to stop wasting time on those that do not care about you. They ask Jesus, Lord, Master, do you care? Carest thou not that we perish? He said, oh, you're such a little faith. The Bible said, he stood up spoke to the wind, spoke to the storm, the rain that was in their life. And he said, peace. Before he said, be still, he said, peace. The storm was still going on, but he'd already said, peace. He was letting you know, you can have peace before the storm is over. How oh, many of them by myself? You said, well, Pastor, my storm is it's still raging, it's still going on. Yeah, but you can have peace in the midst of that storm. Because when he said peace, there will be peace. God, let me. Then he said, be still. If you can just wait, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to learn to have patience. Because God already got it worked out. He tried to figure it out. God already had it worked out. All God had to do is say one word, peace. Your inheritance is going to come. And when it comes, the Bible says, even 
in your healing and become speedy. That may be one today. Come on, this altar is available. This altar is available. You need to come right now while the Lord is moving in this place. Come. Come. Come to Jesus. Come to him. Come for healing. Maybe you're already saved. That's fine. But you need to come. The altar is the place to come. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Watch God do it for you. Watch God fix it for you. Watch God handle it. Nothing too hard for God. This God that neither sleeps, he never neither slumbers, he that keeps Israel. Receive the blessings right now. All the time, blessing won't show up in things and stuff. For the Bible says that gain is not a sign of godliness. Just because we see people prosperous. Look at all of them in the scripture we just read. They were so prosperous. They were buying properties, merchandise, getting married, going on the honeymoon, going on the trips. But they didn't have time for God. Make some time for God. Make some room for God. He's making room for you.